Can you hear me now? Can you hear my heartbeat? <laughs> it's coming through. <laughs> Okay, hi everyone. My name is Erin Davidson and I'm in the BA program. I would like to quickly take this moment to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish nations of the Wasonic, Lugwangan, Songhees, and Esquimalt peoples. I thank them for sharing this beautiful land and campus with us. So I was fortunate to complete my practicum with Island Health here in Victoria. Island Health is responsible for providing healthcare services through a network of hospitals, clinics, centers, health units, and residential care locations to over 794,000 people. I was primarily working under the Healthy Schools program. So Healthy Schools is a provincial initiative that works with partners from health and education sectors, as well as the broader community, in order to help all students develop healthy habits that last a lifetime and foster their development. So Healthy Schools focuses on the whole student, meaning that all aspects of their health are considered and regional health authorities across BC are responsible for putting this initiative in action. So they identify and act on regional and school-based health priorities. This includes providing schools with links to community resources and services, supporting connections with community partners, sharing and interpreting health information, and finding resources and grants to support Healthy Schools projects. Healthy Schools follows the internationally recognized approach of comprehensive school health, which was very exciting to see in another presentation. So it is a priority of Healthy Schools to ensure that all of these components are included. And I was fortunate to see this in action through attending meetings and observing the collaboration with teaching staff, community organizations, and within the Healthy Schools team. And I was able to be involved in three main projects for the sake of clarity and time, I will be focusing on the Island Parent Magazine article I created, which focuses on the importance of physical, physical literacy for children, which is the motivation, confidence, and excitement to engage in physical activities. So the Island Parent Magazine is a Greater Victoria community resource for parents and includes articles as well as information on community events and programming. I wanted to demonstrate how easy it can be to incorporate physical literacy at home and hopefully reach out to families who maybe can't afford to be putting their children in recreational programming or sports, or parents who feel that they don't have the skills and competencies to teach their children. There can be many barriers that may impact children's access for being active, so I wanted to assure parents that physical activity can be simple, free, and enjoyable. Physical health of all children and youth is a component of healthy schools, and myself and my supervisors knew this was a critical topic to inform parents on. According to Statistics Canada, only 7% of 5 to 7 year olds and 4% of 12 to 17 year olds meet the Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines, which recommends 60 minutes of moderate to vig vigorous physical activity per day. My article aims at engaging children in physical activity before they start kindergarten and demonstrates how physical activity impacts their overall development and excitement to exercise and interact with others at such a young age. The key component of physical literacy is that it isn't about being an all-star athlete, but instead the enjoy enjoyment of physical activity regardless of what that may look like for each individual child. I offered suggestions of activities that were incredibly flexible for families and parents. For me, it was about giving examples that could hopefully spark inspiration for physical activity within a household and help children kickstart their excitement to be physically active and healthy. What I love about the Island Parent Magazine is that it is free and incredibly accessible within the community through cafes, recreation centers, schools, and other community spaces. The resources in the article are promoting accessible family-based activities that encourage health and well-being, and I'm hopeful that the article will be able to excite parents to engage in physical activity as a family. The public health and social policy skills that I addressed in all of my projects with Island Health include critical and creative thinking, strong written communication, critical appraisal of health information, working in an interprofessional work environment, and effective knowledge translation. Although I used academic research and other websites to prepare for the article, it was important that the finished product contain simple, clear language that was understandable and enjoyable to read. I could absolutely go on about everything I've learned in this program and in my practicum, as the learning opportunities have been exceptional and have provided me the necessary education for a career in public health. I would like to sincerely thank everyone who has been so supportive during this practicum experience and through my time with UVic. Janelle, my practicum supervisor at Island Health, Betty, Natalie, and everyone else at UVic and Island Health who have supported and encouraged me. 
Island Health is an amazing organization, and I am happy to announce that I have recently accepted a position with them working under the Tobacco Prevention and Control Services Unit here in Victoria. So, thank you. Thank you, Erin. Questions? Maybe about job hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Beats me. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. I was just curious as to what um, actual examples you gave in your article about uh, physical activities uh, for these children. I work, mm -hmm. I work with the Heart and Stroke Foundation and with children, and they, um, and so I'd like to just have some ideas to propose to sure. the foundation. <laughs> yeah, the nature of Island Parent is very, very casual. It's a lot of parents putting their input, and it kind of came from, I'm a kinder gym attendant, so I work with the little toddlers, and I run around the gym once a week, and I, so I kind of just, I kept it a little vague just because of the kind of comedic nature of the article, too. It wasn't, it's not so line by line, do this, do this, so I, I guess I suggested, like, there was some stuff to do around the house that, like, making chores fun, if that's possible, <laughs> and there was a few just outdoor, indoor activities, but nothing too specific, yeah. Okay, other questions? Thanks for your presentation and shout out to Comprehensive School Health. We just <laughs> chatted about it. <laughs> um, I like that you acknowledge like the CSEP guidelines or the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology, I never remember the acronym, like has the 60 <laughs> minutes of moderate to vigorous um, activity guideline per day. But I also, I really like the perspective of them putting in sedentary guidelines as well and you giving recommendations, I think, on doing like housework or like walking the dog or everything like that makes that more... Um, accessible to kids and their parents. So um, I think acknowledging not only do they have to be physically active, but limit the sedentary lifestyles that they live. So they actually do have guidelines of like limiting two hours of great, sitting time, yeah. right? And getting them active and moving. So I'm curious if you kind of like acknowledge like that perspective of things rather than like actually just like increasing their level of physical activity versus decreasing their sedentary movements. I didn't mention anything explicit about the sedentary behaviors, but that totally was a perspective that I was trying to get at too. Like, I'm no professional athlete either, so, and yeah, so it wasn't explicitly stated, but that's definitely what, it kind of was less about, you know, going and playing one softball game for 45 minutes and burning X calories and doing that. So it definitely was about, you know, how do we incorporate this into a family's routine. And this was a shorter article, so you couldn't get too into it, but it was a cool topic to mm -hmm. focus how many, on. How many hundred words did you have? I think it was 800 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pretty tight, pretty tight. There's yeah. a lot of, yeah. <laughs> a lot of deleting editing. and yeah. Mm -hmm. Any final questions? If not, we'll say thank you to our first two BA presenters for the afternoon.